we are on board the inaugural flight of Air France's uh, June, which is the Millennial Airline, down to Cape Town from Paris, Charles de Gaulle. We set off uh, quite early, um, I think it was 9.40 uh, departure, and it's a flight time of about 11 and a half hours. Uh, I'm in the business class cabin, which I'll show you more of um, in a moment. and. Um, we were greeted on board, uh, jackets taken as normal, uh, water, champagne, orange juice um, offered. So the business class cabin that you get on this A340 is to all intents and purposes the same that you would have got before when it was an Air France one. But just to show you the cabin and also indicate which I thought were the best seats, uh, before we set off I had a look round and uh, this is what I thought. So the cabin on the June business class has four rows of seats A and C on one side, then in the centre it's got another set of double seats. There are actually six rows in the centre and then on the far side there there are five sets of seats. Uh, window seats uh, look good but of course when the seats are fully reclined you have to climb over the person who's on the aisle. You don't have direct aisle access um, and for that reason a lot of people prefer to be on these aisle seats which would be either the ones in the centre or the aisle seats on the windows. The configuration is 5AC on this final row where I'm standing and then you've got D, H, L and J so that's um, D and H in the middle and then J and L. Being the millennial airline that Air France wants June to be, the colours are nice and bright. You've got these bright blue pillows, uh, the blankets, and the I believe those are the amenity bags in there. We'll have a look at that in a minute. As you can see, the um, overhead lockers aren't the largest. So, for instance, with that standard size wheelie bag, you do have to turn it sideways um, to get it into the overhead locker. And then we've got a little amenity bag here, which I was going to show you. Um, so it has this for shoes I believe. It's got uh, covers for the earphones, it's got a pair of slippers, you can see those there, slippers, and a pair of flight socks. And as well as the uh, slippers and the flight socks you get a little amenity bag uh, with an eye mask, earplug, toothbrush, toothpaste, some Clarins products, well just one, a Hydra Essential, I think some moisturiser, and then some pillow mist. It's about three quarters full for the inaugural. I'm in the back row on this left hand side which is um, 5A, a window seat, and luckily for me 5C is uh, vacant next to me. In fact most of the passengers are towards the front of the aircraft so uh, row 6 which is just there is empty, there's only two seats there. and. Um, the two centre seats in five are empty as well, so I'll be able to take some pictures and show you what the aircraft is like. It's an A340, um, and it's an Air France A340, the sort of which they've had for many, many years. I, I've done a flight review previously on the A340, and that was probably back in 2004, so it looks exactly the same in terms of the seats, but they've been refreshed, new seat covers, uh, that sort of thing. And then I was told, actually, it is new seating in premium economy and economy, probably as much as anything. Um, so that they can uh, put power into the seats, but also the new seats are more comfortable. I don't think they've actually crammed in more seats, but I'll, I'll go back and have a look maybe uh, later on. Each seat has its own reading light, so you can read undisturbed or not disturbing your neighbour during the night flights. The seat has um, controls here. These don't actually do anything, so if you want to recline, you press this, and if you want to go back up to sitting, this is your one. And then the tray table comes out of the side here. And it's a pretty good design um, because it uh, rests on the arm here. And what that means is that actually it's, uh, it's very firm for when you want to uh, work or eat. And under there, you can see that you have the um, control, but also your headphones and water. then down here there is the USB and the power. Power is for US and EU only, not uh, UK. So this is the bed in the fully flat position or as fully flat as it goes. Strangely um, there's a sort of small gap 
there between the bed and the uh, footstool. Okay, this being a millennial airline, there's actually quite a complicated thing to do with the, the Wi-Fi. There is no Wi-Fi on board, or not Wi-Fi that you can buy, but what you can do is stream to your device, presumably over Wi-Fi. Uh, the intention is for there to be Wi-Fi on June flights, um, but that's not going to happen until they get the A350s. So what you do is you get this instruction card, which I'm going to swap over from uh, French to English. Give me a second. It says is 100% free in-flight streaming, which is true on your personal device. What you're supposed to do is download the UJune application um, before you fly, as it says there at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not before you fly anyway. So you download the application, activate airplane mode when you're on um, the flight, activate the Wi-Fi, join the network, open the application and connect and then you get to stream different things. I've tried doing it on my phone, it doesn't work. It also doesn't work on my iPad, but weirdly enough it does work on my laptop. So there we go. So that's what you get. You get the, um, you know, all the normal blurb. You get uh, the air map if you want to watch it on your laptop, although obviously I could also watch it on the IFE, but I don't know. That's another option, I suppose. Um, you can see where we are now, just currently over um, between Algiers and Tunis with uh, a total distance to go nearly 8,000 kilometres to Cape Town, which probably give me a chance to uh, work out this thing. But what you can also do through this is I could watch um, in-flight entertainment. So I could watch, for instance, Game of Thrones on my laptop. At this point, I'll probably get blanked out, so I'll have to stop. Okay, there we are. So that's a demonstration of how it works. So that's uh, terrain and um, spelt on the right-hand side. Some um, bread and butter and a glass of Chablis. This is the main course of pork. And um, as you'd hope for, with it being an Air France airline, you get some nice uh, La Roche Chablis. The champagne is Tattinger. There's a Joseph Melo Sancerre, Le Chatelaine. I'm not even going to pronounce that. Um, from the south of France. Is there anything else here? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, there's one there as well. A Grand Cru Classe. That's a Bordeaux Saint Emilion Grand Cru. So, good choice. And this is the second meal. About two hours outside Cape Town. Uh, it's a chicken in a kind of curry sauce. Well, that's how it was described to me. So, uh, about two and a half hours um, out of Cape Town. Uh, had supper, also had a bit of a sleep. It's a day flight, uh, but I managed to get about an hour and a half sleep. Uh, the cabin lights were dimmed. Um, it has some sort of quite nice mood lighting on this flight, so uh, it's a nice way of going to sleep and also waking up, although there's obviously the eye mask. The bed, when it's fully reclined, is comfortable. Um, it's not fully flat, but it's certainly flat enough to get um, a good night's sleep, or in my case, just a snooze through the afternoon. If you're wondering about this whole idea of what is a millennial airline, the chief executive is on board, and I asked him, um, I think really the reason that Air France has launched the airline is two parts. Firstly, it's to provide a, a cost-effective way of serving most difficult routes, by which it means not the most profitable ones, but ones that it wants to keep um, operating on or keep serving. So Air France served this Cape Town route uh, until the moment that June was created and, and um, came onto this route. Um, it's what the same aircraft, it's gone from an A330 to an A340, so um, it's actually added some capacity. Um, but the real reason for operating it is that the costs are slightly less. So, for instance, the flight attenders get paid less. I think the pilots get saved, uh, paid the same. Um, and also to attract, hopefully, a new audience. The, the other reason was this idea that June is somehow an innovation lab, so they'll try out new ideas, uh, whether it's in Wi-Fi or the way that they offer the food, um, the, the way that you can pre-book food, um, and um, see whether those work. And apparently that kind of innovation can also save them costs as well. So 
In terms of the experience, you're not going to see something that's hugely different from Air France. Lots of different colours, lots of the soft things are different. But until they get the new aircraft for Zoom, which will be in the autumn of 2019, you'll still be flying on, for instance, these A340s uh, long haul. Very nicely done up, but uh, they are the aircraft that you would know uh, from if you've flown Air, Air France regularly. We've also found out that these aircraft aren't going to be retrofitted with Wi-Fi. Um, apparently there was a project that looked into it, it was too difficult. So what you will get on board is uh, the in-flight entertainment to the screen that you have in front of you and you also have the option of streaming it from the server on board to your device. But what you won't have is Wi-Fi where you can actually just connect and pay a fee and send emails. That's something that again won't happen until they get the new A350 aircraft in the autumn of 2019. So is the price any different? Well, one thing that Air France are pretty keen on emphasising is that June is not a low-cost airline and the price to travellers reflects that. Um, it will try and be as competitive as it can be and they're very keen on mentioning the fact that Cape Town is a competitive route. That's one of the reasons that they've put June on the route rather than Air France. But what you won't see is, is um, uh, much, much cheaper fares. They do now offer them one way, so you can buy a one way fare to Cape Town um, and as they say I think the, the entry level is 279 euros but certainly the business class fares that I looked at on this route um, aren't that different from uh, what you would have expected with Air France. So then what's the verdict? Well uh, the service has been good, um, the in-flight entertainment pretty good, uh, it doesn't work completely at the moment but to be fair this is an inaugural. Um, the food, well Maybe not so good. Uh, the, obviously there's no menus on board, but that's because it's an inaugural. Um, by the time they got to the back of the cabin, there was only the choice of two of the four main courses. And those two main courses that were left were pork and squid, which is a pretty strong argument for pre-booking your food, I think. Um, and then the second course, uh, which is the one two hours outside Cape Town, um, I chose the chicken, a different chicken, but unfortunately, although it's a hot course, it's been served cold. Um, you know, they're teething problems, I suppose, and I'm sure that uh, other flyers will have different experiences on their flights.